So some of the things about Has Been Hotel, I think that was really strong that they did right really lies in what they did not do wrong. Uh, for example, uh, Nifty is a small comic relief character. Um, you know, she plays a she plays a bit of part. She's she's part of the main cast, but she is a small comic relief com, uh, comedic relief character. Um, but usually, I find those characters wildly annoying. Uh, they usually have really shrill voices, and they're just kind of awful awful to hear and a lot of people will be like oh well those you know that character is supposed to be annoying it's part of their character i don't i don't care the, the characters are annoying i don't i don't want them in in my show i don't want to listen to them at all now in the same vein the villains are likable as villains, right? Like, they're obviously not good people, and that's Adam, Alistair, Valentino, Vox, Velvet, right? Like, they're evil, hands down, evil. Doesn't, you know... But they're all likable characters, and they're not needlessly complex, and they're not needlessly, like, gray, morally gray characters. They're, they're cartoonishly evil, and that's what I want in a cartoon. Um, the swearing is funny trope, uh, even though the, the show has tons of swearing, which usually, again, much like the small annoying character, I typically find very annoying, but the entire joke isn't that the character is just swearing, like, it, it feels like a natural speech pattern for those characters like adam is like super insecure uh, about his status and position um and he never thinks of anything clever to say so he just you know swears at whoever he's talking to because that's all he can think of he's needlessly vulgar um and again it feels like natural speech there's something about how a lot of a lot of swearing is written feels very unnatural. Like it feels like the either the writing and or the actor just don't know how to like swear in their regular speech. And like, I'm not really somebody who's like, oh yeah, you need to swear all the time or whatever. But I, you know, I usually just will drop like the f bomb in the middle of a sentence just because it's how. I grew up, it's part of my natural speech pattern. So it makes sense. And that's why the swearing is funny trope doesn't bother me in this show. Um, another thing is that uh, LGBT characters get to just exist in the show and their primary strife isn't just struggling with LGBT, with being LGBT. Um, there's no burying the gays trope. You know, like we didn't need uh, like, for lack of a better word, a sacrificial lamb in, like, Vaggy. We didn't need Vaggy to die for Charlie to do whatever. Like, you know, she doesn't need to die. Um, and in addition to that, lesbian characters' defining traits aren't just about them hating men. There's no mention anywhere that, like, Charlie and Vaggy hate men, and that's why they're lesbian. Like, that is such an overused trope that I'm so tired of seeing, because it just... It somehow manages to make a, a like a WLW relationship about men, instead of being about, like, just a nice lesbian couple. You know, it's not necessary. Uh... Every episode felt fast, but not too fast. It didn't feel like they were just burning through everything. Like, I'm sure they had a limited limited time and everything to get stuff done. But, like, there was still heart put into, into all the animation. There was a lot of small little details that make things fun. Um, but one of my biggest issues with, like, most shows that I've tried to watch 
Um, especially, I think it's a big thing that was when shows started coming out after Game of Thrones, is that a whole episode would be 20 minutes of people just talking and, and nothing happening. And, you know, it's, it's just very tiring. I don't really find it interesting when characters just sit there and talk for 20 minutes without actually doing anything. Things happen, and, you know, it's a cartoon. Uh, you know, things happen in cartoon ways. Uh, there's no obsession with realism either, which is very nice. Now, something that usually bothers me in a lot of shows is uh, depictions of SA uh, usually bother me quite a bit. Um, and Or just imbalanced relationship structures usually feel really bad to see, and I don't like watching them. Um, and... I think it was a, a really good job was done during the song Poison with Angel Dust, where we were able to see that, you know, he is, he's not explicitly being essayed, but he is kind of being forced to do a lot of movies that he doesn't want to do. And, you know, in, in turn, that ends up with him having to... Uh, have relations with people he does, probably doesn't want to. But too many shows that will depict things like SA, it feels like they spend way too much time like graphically depicting it for no real reason other than like, it usually just feels gross to see because there's such a big focus on just showing them being essayed. And I... That makes me uncomfortable, and I don't like seeing that. But seeing the struggles that he goes through in the Poison song, it didn't give me that same ick factor uh, that a lot of shows usually do. Shows and movies. Uh, another thing that they did well um, is that the songs are influenced. You can you can very clearly tell that the songs are influenced from other genres, um, but it doesn't like it comes from a place of somebody who loves music and isn't just making parody for parody's sake. Um, it it's more of like an homage to those genres than it is straight up parody. I think so another small, small thing that I really like about Hasbun Hotel and Hell of a Boss is there are characters who are intended to be sexy and and you know aspects of their personality that are sexy, their bodies are depicted as sexy. But the show itself doesn't do an incredible amount of fan service. Like, the characters just exist. You can tell that they're stylized, that they're supposed to be sexy, but they're. It's not softcore porn fan service. Like, in place of, you know, anything actually useful 